From Learfield, this is the ChirpCast, your source for everything Ball State Athletics. It's a fun edition of ChirpCast and the Coaches Show here today with head coach Mike New. Find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube. We start off with Coach New. We have Coach Elliott and then Brady Hunt, the tight end, coming in on ChirpCast. Coach, this is a very good show today. We're excited to have you on. It's a great Monday. How about that? Uh, it was a fun Saturday, a uh, crazy Saturday, uh, but man, uh, it was such an exciting finish to the day and uh, great to be here. There's a lot to talk about, about Saturday, and it's, it's a Monday. It's a couple of days after the big win. Just first overall, starting off with the feel good, how important and how impactful was it to be able to, to, to get that comeback and to be able to win that game in that circumstance? You know, I just, I really credit the players. I credit the staff. Uh, you know, obviously we played very poor in the first half. Uh, that's an understatement, but I, I'm so proud of the guys, uh, the players and the staff are just responding, uh, starting with the attitude, starting with the approach to the second half. Just just come out, man. Just believe. Just have a can-do attitude. Be positive and, and let's just go compete as hard as we can for the 30 minutes that we have left. And if we all believe it, uh, you never know what can happen, and uh, just a great, uh, a great finish to the day. Huge uh, win for us to get the bronze stock back here, and uh, our first win in MAC play. And so, uh, as you know, just like I do, they all just continue to get tougher. Uh, but that was a special day. Do you have a voice? Is your Barely. voice okay? Barely. <laughs> I, I had soup yesterday, uh, uh, and uh, tried. You know, I've certainly had too much coffee, but uh, tried to make sure that I recover the best I can. My recovery is a little different than the player recovery. Fair. <laughs> My, <laughs> mine's from the excitement level and uh, the uh, yelling and the jubilation. So, uh, but hey, I'll be fine. Coach, you joined us on the post game show on the radio right after the game. You had all the emotions. It, it, you, you sounded pretty emotional down on the sidelines. Why? You know, that's it's it's an emotional game. You know, that's what uh, to be able to do this for a career uh, and uh, it's an emotional game. And when you put as much into it as you do, uh, when you win a game like that in that fashion uh, that comes down to the last play of the game, mm -hmm. you know, the emotions just kind of overwhelm you. And uh, in those situations, that's what happens for me. Uh, you know, I'm just excited because I think about all the hard work uh, that went into it by the staff. I think about all the hard work from the players. Uh, you only get one opportunity that you're guaranteed at the end of the week. And there's a lot that goes into a week of preparation. I'm sure a lot of people wonder, you know, what really takes place behind the scenes. But there's a lot that goes into it. a lot of late nights, a lot of sacrifices. Uh, when you have a chance to get one like that, uh, just to be able to enjoy it, uh, because there's never enough time to really enjoy it. Uh, but you want to try to get that done and be able to see your family, uh, to be able to have that scene in the locker room. It's cool. How did you see that comeback in this win affect the players post game? Uh, I just I think what it does more than anything else is we know we have a good football team. I believe that, and um, I know every one of our players do. And when you can get a win like that, knowing that you didn't play your best football, that's big, uh, and that can be a, a, a season changing type of win for us. Now we got to move on from it quickly. Uh, you know, it was it was great to be able to to kind of put it to bed yesterday when we had a team meeting yesterday after afternoon, handed out some awards for the game, uh, put that trophy uh, in the trophy case, and man, it's it's moving on to the next one because, you know, Central Michigan, Michigan is a great football team that uh, has been playing at a high level, and, uh, you know, Coach McElwain has done a good job, but you, you have to move on, and, uh, you know, but for us, and just to see the confidence, the excitement, the belief, all those things in the locker room after the game with our team, and yesterday, uh, I think it can do a lot for us. You mentioned it a little bit earlier, not a good first half what changed between first half and second half uh you know sometimes you never know you know you you, you work so hard you try to deliver one final message to the team but just go out and relax and play and have fun we all know that we got to win the effort battle we all know we got to be the most physical team everybody in here knows you got to do your job one play at a time and you know sometimes when it's you know that the emotions can get wrapped up in the game sometimes guys can simply just try to do too much you want something so bad that you don't play 
the way you're capable of playing. Maybe you're a little bit too tense. Maybe you're a little bit too tight. So uh, I think, you know, when, when you get in that situation and you're down the way that you are, you just go and you fight. And I think that's what we learned about our team is just the fight, the resilience, the makeup, the toughness, the character. All those things were on display in the second half. And, you know, you could go all the way down the line and look at everybody on the roster that was on that sideline. And they all deserve credit because nobody blinked. And there was never a moment on the sideline where I felt like anybody was – uh, abandoning ship or anybody was saying, man, I don't believe in my teammate. They just all stayed together. And it was awesome to see when there was something that didn't go our way, guys were picking them up on the sideline. And, and then when something good would happen, it'd be a quick celebration, then on to the next one. So uh, really the credit, uh, I said it, you know, when we started here, but the credit really does uh, go to the players for just uh, digging deep and, and uh, just fighting. Mike, it seemed like there were several turning points in that game against Northern Illinois. From your perspective as the head coach, what moment was the defining change of point? Well, you come out in the second half in that third play of the second half to get that interception. And then obviously we got great field position. Then right away we were able to put a touchdown on the board and we're barely two minutes in uh, to the second half. I think that was that was critical. The defense came out and delivered yeah. a momentum uh, changing play play uh, for us that really got the excitement uh, going really you know uh, fed off of that I think for the rest of the game there and so I really look at that and say man that was a great uh, great script great way uh, to start the second half there to be able to get that quick turnover. There were a lot of plays. Cole Pierce made a couple of really big stops um, in overtime and in, in regulation. It seemed like he was he was all over the field as well. The Amos interception was big. But going to the 68-yard the 60 68 yard run by Whaley, that seemed like it, it opened the game up for Northern Illinois for just a moment. But then the response by the offense, that seemed like the second big defining moment. What made the offense be able to click right after that big run by Northern Illinois? I think it was the, the offense took it personal. Like, it, man, we have to step up. We have to respond right here. You know, that big run happened. There was two of those big runs in the game that were just one little mistake here or one body, you know, one person not being gap sound and that's what can happen. And so that's why you preach, you know, gap integrity so much guys doing their job. But I think it was, you know, certainly credit the offense for, for saying we have to respond right here. We have to put together a drive and go down the field and score. And so uh, that's, you know, when, when one side's down, the other's got to pick them up. It's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a chess match for four quarters. And, you know, that's what I love about our football team is they're always there for one another another they always pick each other up and you know it's it's a it's a game that you know it's a different formula every single week and so uh, whatever it takes to get it done our guys are just bought into that wasn't a day for kickers, was it, with the wind? That was pretty nasty down there. You know, and I didn't really, you know, when the first, when the morning started and, and, you know, we really first got out there for pregame warm-up, I didn't know, I didn't think it was that bad. But then, you know, as, as you know, it's happened many times around here, it just started <laughs> to swirl. And then, man, there was a definite, there was a definite influence on the game, especially in the kicking game. Obviously, you know, that, that you, you saw that take place, um, you know, early in the game when we, um, you know, misjudged the kickoff there and they got the possession. And so uh, those are things that you work on tirelessly. And, and uh, you know, obviously uh, the win was certainly an influence in that game the other day. When things like that happen and the, the kick that landed back into Northern Illinois' favor, how do you rally everybody together after a situation like that? Because that, that seemed like it could have been one of the defining moments for Northern Illinois, but you guys did not let that rally you. Yeah, I think, again, just crediting the players and, you know, the commitment and the belief in each other on the sideline and nobody, you know, nobody, you know, abandoned ship. You know, I know I, I just mentioned that, but really our guys just stay together through thick and thin. We try to preach that, you know, this this game, this conference, there's a lot of four-quarter games, and uh, no matter how it starts – uh, you know, the finish uh, is what's most important. And so, you know, there's things that are going to happen throughout the course of a 60-minute football game like that, some good, some bad. But we got to truly have that next play mentality and just uh, stay committed to the process. And our guys really do a great job of that. We're with head coach Mike New here on Chirpcast of the Coaches Show, wrapping up the NIU game, looking forward to Central Michigan. Coach, we could probably say this again, John Paddock. Was this his best week of performance and we're five weeks in now we've said it every week up to this point yeah and I'm going to say yes to that because you know John did not play his best first half of football but what really is awesome about John is just how competitive he is and how he played his best football uh, when it mattered the most he played unbelievable in the fourth quarter he played unbelievable in overtime his leadership his fire uh, sometimes to a fault just like mine my fire sometimes <laughs> is to a fault on the sideline I get so fired up and but John you know was such a competitor and you know in the first half he did a great job of coming in at halftime kind 
kind of settling down, looking himself in the mirror and saying, you know what, yeah, I, I, I got to be better than that. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I will be better than that. And I'll, I'll never forget him saying that. And, and, you know, and he was. He came back out and played an unbelievable second half and engineered uh, one of the biggest comebacks in school history. Uh, proud of him for that. And I definitely agree uh, that this was his best game so far. You said at third largest comeback in Ball State football history, and it was without Carson Steele having his most effective day because NIU's defense was preparing for Steele and B has a really good run defense. How was the offense able to, to manufacture enough of Carson Steele and use him as a way to open up the passing game too. Yeah, there's no question. You have to give credit to Northern Illinois. Their run defense is good. They've got a good defensive line. They've got a good front seven. Uh, they cause some problems with some of the movement uh, that they that they uh, utilize up front. Uh, but when we got to the second half, obviously we were in a situation where we relied a little bit more on the pass game because we were behind uh, coming out there in the second half and uh, trying to get ourselves back into it. So uh, still all starts uh, with us in the run game with Carson Steele. He still had a great day. I know he didn't For get sure. to 100 yards, but he still had three huge rushing touchdowns. He had some critical yards uh, in critical situations. And so uh, he still had a really good day. Uh, I know it's a lot of times you just look and you see the numbers and say, well, he didn't have 100, uh, so it must not be one of his better performances. But he really uh, ground up out some tough yards and uh you know it still all starts with Carson Steele for us in the run game and uh the offensive line uh starting with those guys up front sometimes it's deeper than just the stats right it's the tape turn it on and That's see right. how a player performs there's no question you know yeah. there was you know a lot of things that Carson did for us uh both in the run game both in the pass game and obviously everybody keys on him and pays attention to him so much so when he is on the field in the passing game you know if you can draw attention to him and uh they're focused on him and what might be a, a run down by tendency but yet it ends up being a throw uh that's still uh doing your job and and Carson does that as well as anybody in our program one person that's starting to see more attention on the offensive side Nick Presley had a pretty big impact against Northern Illinois what's his role been like in, in developing yeah you know Nick's got great speed uh, and I think you know over the last couple of weeks especially you could see a little bit of a change in his confidence he's playing fast trusts what he's doing uh you know he came he came out there and and uh, whatever you ask him to do Nick's done a good job both in the past game and he really uh, what's underrated so far with Nick is just his blocking on the perimeter. He's done a really good job uh, blocking on the perimeter, taking pride in that. And uh, his role is just going to continue to grow. And I think you see, you know, his investment uh, in studying uh, when we're not on the practice field, that's paid off for him. And uh, he's really put some good snaps together on the practice field, which has led to more uh, playing time for him on game day. A couple more things on, on NIU real fast. The tight ends, we've talked about them so many times on this podcast, but it just seems like we have to keep going back to it because they are producing at such a high level. Uh, Tanner, again, a couple touchdowns. Brady with another touchdown. What did you see specifically from those two in this game that just helped them help John and open up the offense? Those two guys are pretty good. Yeah, they're okay, uh, right? For, for young, for <laughs> it's it's impressive what they're doing for young players and not having played that position, uh, you know, prior to their time here at Ball State. Both of those guys, it starts with their work ethic. It starts with uh, just how hard they go about it. Coach Elliott uh, has really done a good job of mentoring uh, both of those young guys, and uh, you know, every week uh, you can just see their confidence level grow. Not just as a receiver in the passing game, but both of them are getting better each and every week. Block Blocking in the run game, uh, you can see their confidence growing. They'll have some good snaps in the run game and go, man, I, that felt good. I know I can get this done. And so uh, both of those guys, man, are really – uh, have so much upside and uh, such a huge uh, asset to our offense here. Uh, you know, when, when when you can have those guys on the field, you can run the ball and then, oh, by the way, um, you know, split them out whatever way you want to uh, and be able to utilize them in the passing game. Both of them delivered big time on Saturday. That was a huge, you know, the one bright spot there in the first half was that long touchdown run by Brady. And when he caught that thing on that shallow cross and turned it up the sideline, he was running that big, big <laughs> Big man was moving and, uh, and pulling away, and then you just think about a couple of those, you know, catches that that uh, Tanner had, you know, one on our sideline where he went up and climbed the ladder. That's a big man going up a long way uh, to snag the ball in the air, and uh, those touchdown catches, both of them by him, uh, were really impressive. So uh, those two guys have uh, been such a huge addition uh, to our offense, and shoot, the best is still yet to come for both those guys because they're both tremendous young men with high character. Uh, and phenomenal work ethic.
It felt like Tanner was double covered in a lot of situations too, cutting through a few defenders and still going up and making those plays. That's just impressive for a freshman to be able to do that. It really is, and that just shows the trust that John has in both of those guys, really all of us. You know, John takes so much pride in uh, building a good rapport with all the skilled players, and no matter what position it is, and getting on the same page and making sure that uh, you know they build a great relationship together. So I just think it speaks already. Uh, you know, just five games into it, I think it speaks about the trust factor that John has uh, in the guys that are around him. Looking at some of the things that you want to see improvement wise, Mike, what are those? Yeah, we just getting off to a better start. You know, let's let's not <laughs> let's not get ourselves in that kind of a situation. That's not a great formula uh, to continue to repeat and try to have success. So getting off to a good start, you know, getting, you know, settled in earlier in the game, whatever that magic button, which we know both both know that doesn't exist, but whatever that, you know, mentality that needs to be on display from the opening kickoff, we just gotta settle in uh, and get started earlier. We guys gotta settle down. Uh, guys gotta know that, you know, every week that's just what the Mid American Conference is. It's just a dogfight uh, every single week. So just getting started uh, faster in all phases and uh, going out and executing you know it's it's a it's a boring uh, cliche a boring saying just to you know continue to preach the one at a time but maybe you just you just got to go out and you got to if you if you can just focus on that then maybe all the other noise uh, that goes on throughout the course of the game that'll that'll kind of go by the wayside and you can just really focus on playing and doing your job and doing it at a high level. I mean, you've been around the Mid-American Conference for a while. Player, coach, you've done this, you've seen it. It's always different every year, but the one thing that stays the same is mayhem in some capacity in the MAC. How do you try to stay even with those ebbs and flows in this conference? Because it, it can be tough. There's no question. Every game that we play in is is emotional to some degree, and there's always something at stake. You know, there. You know, no matter who it is you're playing, whether it's a MAC West opponent or it's a crossover crossover game with the East, it's just a good conference. Uh, and you know, we touched on it a lot. You know, up to this point in season, there's so many one possession games that you know all the possessions that you do have throughout the course of the game, they all matter. And you want to put points on the board. You want to play great defense. You want to be sound on special teams and mistake free on special teams you'll want to win the turnover battle so uh, those are just that's just the type of games that uh, that take place in this conference week in week out that's why it's so awesome but yet you know it's certainly challenging too to make sure that you know as a team you want to be consistent week in week out and one of the biggest challenges against northern illinois was trying to stop that run game yeah. over 300 yards coach what do you want to see in that capacity to get better yeah we got to go back and certainly we talked about the two long runs that you know you could you could chalk up to just not being gap sound like we needed to be we had a few missed tackles where we will continue to hit you know the tackling circuit when we get back on the practice field here but uh, at the same time too you know guys know that man it's a great uh, example to teach your players like when you do get out of position that's what can happen if we have two guys in one gap and not all gaps taken care of that's what can happen and so uh, those are things I know I with 100% confidence in coach Stockton uh, the defensive staff that uh, that'll be the first thing addressed uh, when we get back on the practice field tomorrow uh, that was the first thing that was addressed yesterday uh, when we had meetings to watch the tape from Northern and make corrections from that game and uh, we'll get that handled and Mike just looking at the tape from that one specific run with Whaley's 68-yard carry. The defense was trying to stop the run because it was a rundown situation. Yeah. So when looking at it, I don't think anybody can sit back and, and blame how the defense was trying to approach that because, like you said, there was one spot that was missed and that was it outside of that that box had been had been set up very well well there's no question and you you have to give them credit you know that's yeah absolutely they do very well you know obviously they're uh you know northern illinois always run the ball at a high level in this conference obviously they did a great job the other day uh mixing in the backup quarterback lynch uh who did a great job with the qb run game and uh, was really making good decisions with that so that was tough to defend uh didn't see a ton of that uh going into our game but um, you know you, you have to give them credit they, they've got a good scheme and they do a good job and they've got good players and uh, you know that's something that uh, we got to get uh, cleaned up on our end because we're going to play another good running back this week. How do you clean up the RPO defense? 
Well, obviously, it, it's all about discipline first and foremost. Everybody has a responsibility. We know that's a big part of what college football is now with the heavy RPO game. And so, uh, but you're going to have to take something away, and you're going to have to get. There's a little bit of give and take that takes place with that. But uh, first starts first and foremost, just like we always say, everybody's got to be bought into doing their job, and uh, you can't compromise the scheme. Everybody's got to be uh, in a certain spot, and everybody has a certain gap, and we just got to get that done. And, and make sure that that doesn't uh, show up again and, and uh, have a similar type situation happen. We're with head coach Mike New on Chirpcast, the coaches show, looking at Central Michigan now after talking about Northern Illinois. Mike, Central Michigan has had a couple of close games. They've had some tough ones. They've played some big power five schools overall, one and four team up to this point in the season. What challenges overall do they provide? Yeah, but the best one and four team uh, that is out there. I uh, think I could agree with that. Yeah, um, I could, this is a good football team, a very good football team. Yeah, they've had some tough games outside of conference. They got into their first conference matchup at Toledo on the road, tough place to win. They lost a turnover battle. Um, you know, obviously they were, uh, Toledo had a huge uh, second quarter there where they put up 28 points so you know they were playing from behind much the same way as we were uh coming out in the second half but uh lou nichols is for you know one of the top backs in this conference one of the top backs in the country led our conference a year ago uh he's a big man uh that does a lot of damage with the ball uh very durable uh very consistent you know what you're going to get week in week out daniel richardson the quarterback is playing at a high level he is tough uh you make some big plays every single week when you look at the tape with his arm, with his legs, uh, you know, very crafty guy. Uh, you know, a lot of ways uh, I look at him and, you know, in, in, in some ways with his talent, uh, throwing the ball, his arm talent, and his ability to put the ball in some tight spots l remind me a lot of John. And um, this is a good team. Their defense uh, obviously uh, wreaks havoc in the backfield. Uh, they're one of the top teams in the country in terms of uh, tackles for lost. Uh, so uh, this will be another great challenge for us. Uh, they're going to be hungry, uh, just like we're hungry uh, every week. You know, you, you play against a team in this conference, really anybody can beat anybody. Uh, and it's all going to come down to consistency went in the turnover battle and um, that's something that 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 uh, you know obviously they lost last week and you know and then you look at special teams and they had two block kick two block punts in the fourth quarter last week uh, that really gave them an opportunity they weren't able to capitalize on it uh, but that gave them an opportunity and um, we're gonna have to be really sound again in all three phases uh, that's going to be something that's that's talked about every single week how do you stop Lou Nichols? Because he's been one of the best in the country. Tackle him with a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tackle him with a lot of bodies uh, because uh, obviously when you're doing uh, the things that Lou does and has been doing uh, for a long time, man, you know, he breaks tackles. He's got incredible balance. He's strong. Uh, he's a tough guy to get to the ground. So we have to have a uh, population. We have to have a lot of guys pursuing to the football uh, and we have to wrap up you know this guy's not going to come down uh with just a collision you got to wrap him up uh and you got to have people uh join in uh in order to be able to get him to the ground and uh, our guys will be ready for that challenge well the good part is carson Steele's on this team and he's tough to tackle so right. ball state football has very big experience in this department yeah and we love the guy that we have you know lou nichols uh is a special player but you know carson Steele is a special player too and uh that's the beauty and that's the awesome thing about this conference is week in week out you got some some really high caliber football players all the way across the field well, mike we appreciate your time as always oh it's great to be here that's head coach mike new on chirpcast the coaches show we'll talk with brady hunt and coach elliott coming up here on chirpcast check us out on all spotify Apple Podcast and YouTube platforms. At Great Hubler Auto Group, every day is a great day to buy a vehicle because every vehicle comes with the Greg Hubler promise. On top of big savings, you'll also get scheduled maintenance included, complimentary roadside assistance, service pickup and drop off, and a car wash with every service visit. Shop new Ford, Hyundai, Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC models, plus tons of used makes and models across four Central Indiana locations. The Greg Hubler promise comes with every vehicle purchase. Visit Greg HubleRauto.com to learn more. Welcome back into ChirpCast. We already talked with head coach Mike New ahead of Ball State football at Central Michigan. We're now joined by tight end Brady Hunt. We had Tanner Koziel on last week, and now we have Brady Hunt on. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Appreciate it. So, Brady, what, what's it been like this year? It's five weeks through the season. It's It's been a pretty fun, uh, fun mix of games, but after a big win against uh, Northern Illinois, what, what's the season been like for you? It's been a lot of fun. You know, a lot of ups and downs. Um, 
obviously playing some tough teams in the start, um, losing a couple one possession games here and there, and then, you know, obviously this week the big double overtime win against NIU. Um, really just a cool experience and, um, you know, just looking to build every week, and it's been a lot of fun. You mentioned a cool experience when that trophy was taken back from the far sideline to the near sideline. What was that moment like for you? It was awesome. Um, really just met Tanner and Coach Elliott in midfield, gave him a big hug, told him I loved him. Um, really just a, a once-in-a-lifetime kind of experience. And, you know, in that locker room after the game, it's the happiest chaos I've ever been a part of. <laughs> um, really just a bunch of guys going crazy, and you can just tell this team loves each other. So it was it was really cool and blessed to be a part of it. Going into the game, you probably knew how much the bronze stock mattered to Ball State. But now that it's back in Muncie, how do you know that that was important for this team? Yeah, you know, this being my first season that I've really gotten significant playing time playing against NIU, um, you know, don't really get a taste of what it's really like until you're out there playing them. And just, just being in that battle with your teammates and then seeing how, how much happiness it brings when, when that trophy's back in our trophy cases. You know, it's big big for Ball State, big for Muncie, and, um, yeah, just an exciting time to be a Cardinal. What have the last 48 hours been like? <laughs> uh, they've, they've been a lot of fun, you know, just hanging out with the guys and, you know, enjoying the win. But now it's on to the next one, and um, you're only as, as good as your next rep. So um, looking to put up a good showing, a better showing even against Central Michigan. Um, like I said, we only I feel like we only played one half of complete football. And uh, once we put together four quarters, we're going to be really dangerous. So putting together four quarters of football being more dangerous how do you put those four quarters together at this point yeah I think um you know coach new talks about it all the time it's always just a little thing here or there um sometimes it's one block or you know one tackle that'll that'll change the whole course of a game and so really just just locking in and making sure that we're we're uh, executing at the highest level on every single play and uh, taking care of the details. That's that's really what's going to get it done. You talk about locking in you and Tanner, John. It seems like the chemistry has been there with you two at tight end and, and John all season long, but it's, it's continued to progress. Just specifically in the Northern Illinois matchup, take us through the huddle of, of the moment that A, Amos had the interception to be able to, to help spark the comeback. What was that huddle like leading up to that second touchdown? Yeah, when, when the defense makes a play like that, the offense knows – that you know we got to capitalize on that short field um really already in the red zone we got to be able to score and that was something that we struggled with the week before as uh you know making plays in the red zone and getting into the end zone and um you know this week we you saw the improvement we we scored when we got there and made the most of our opportunities but you know just in that huddle John's you know a tremendous leader you've seen um the way he leads us and the type of chemistry that we have but um just having him leading us and you know getting us ready to go um we had no doubt that we were going to score that ball. So, from your vantage point, how has John improved through five weeks? Oh, he's just every every week he takes something and he gets better. And um, you know, you can see through his preparation and and the way that he scouts our opponents. Um, he's really just really smart, uh, smart football player, and um, loves the game, loves his teammates, and um, you can just tell his improvement every week. Um, finding the little things to get better at, and and you can see it paying off. What's the relationship like between you and Tanner? It's awesome. I feel like we've known each other forever, even though he's only <laughs> been here for a semester. But, um, you know, we room together on away trips and, you know, always trying to hang out off the field. Um, but, yeah, we push each other, make each other better, and, uh, you know, just want to see the, what's best for both of each other. So, Is there a friendly competition like, hey, I'm going to get six <laughs> catches if you get five? Uh, I'm getting one more than you? No, I just I – just, <laughs> You know, hope that our our, t our team does the best and the tight end room does the best we can. Um, you know, there's going to be some games where he's making plays, some games where I'm making plays, and some games where we're both making plays, you know. So um, really just, just wanting the best for each other and, and uh, you know, doing what we can to make each other better. We're here with Ball State tight end Brady Hunt on Chirpcast. We're going to talk with head coach Mike New. We'll talk with uh, your coach Elliot coming up here later on the show. Let's get to Coach Elliot because he's been pretty instrumental in what the tight ends have done, what the offense has done. What has he meant to you specifically? Coach Elliot's amazing. Um, really feels like a father figure to me already. Um, you know, you walk around the facility and there's not a single guy on the team that will say say a bad thing about him. He just he loves his guys, treats them like they're his own son. And, um, you know, what he does, what he brings as a scheme standpoint is off the charts. He's ex an extremely smart coach, um, 
always looking to improve um, just like everybody else is and uh, always pushing us in the right direction. You mentioned that father figure already. How important was that for you in deciding where to go to school and, and what coaches you wanted to be with? No, yeah, um, it was big. Um, I knew a lot of the coaches just being a Muncie guy. Um, Coach knew living five minutes away from me, <laughs> right. his son in my grade um, at my school, at my high school. So I uh, knew him, knew Coach Lynch, just family connections, all kinds of things. So, um, you know, knowing them and knowing the kinds of people that they are, the values that they have um, was really big for me, just knowing that I was going to be in the right place where people cared about me and were going to take care of me even when, you know, football might not be going so great. Um, they're always going to come in and check up on me. So it was big and just blessed to be here. I definitely want to go down that road because you've had the, the connection and, and the history with the coaching staff and everything. What was it like to be able to, to get the offer to come to Ball State and be able to be a part of the community that you had been a part of already in a different capacity? No, it was it was it's definitely a blessing. Um, you know, Coach New and Coach Lynch even he's got family at Delta, so seeing them around at my high school games and then being able to play for those guys and the types of coaches that they are, um, seeing them definitely in a different capacity. Um, it's been really cool and, you know, just blessed and, you know, just excited that I, I get to develop that relationship with them and, and kind of see them in a new light every day. So it's been really cool and, like I said, just extremely, extremely blessed. What's been your favorite part about staying in the area? Um, you know, there's there's good and bad about everything, but I, I love getting to see my parents all the time. You know, I've always kind of been a homebody. Um, Mom and Dad always, always having dinner with me and finding times to see me. Um, it's really special. And, you know, having – connections from all around Muncie, whether that be high school, you know, church in town, you know, just people from all over. Um, sometimes I'll have people come up to me and tell me a great game and I don't even know who they are, but they know <laughs> who I am. So it's been, it's been cool. And, you know, just, just to be able to have that kind of community, um, being in your hometown is really cool. We're with Brady Hunt here on Chirpcast, the coaches show. Brady, you were not a tight end in high school. What's the transition been like from you quarterback to tight end at the college level now? Yeah, it's been it's been tricky, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, you're going against guys that, you know, you never saw anybody anybody that looks like that in high school. <laughs> um, you know, six six five, three hundred pounds. Like, it's just a different level of speed, strength, and um, and skill. So, um, learning you know the different technique and the aggression that you have to have to play a position like tight end, and and just learning you know all the little things that go into being a great college football player has been big and um you know really just try to improve every day and I think that you know I've made large strides but I've got even even bigger strides to take so still trying to improve and make it get better every day and uh just coming in ready to work day one what was the hardest part about transitioning to a tight end um I'd have to say just just trying to trying to go off the ball and be aggressive while still staying under control. I know it sounds like a simple thing, but when you're trying to push people as hard as you can, it's hard to keep your base and not get thrown off. And these dudes are freaks <laughs> at the college level <laughs> compared to high school. So, um, yeah, definitely day one, just, you know, coming in raw with no technique kind of kind of was a challenge. But I, I feel like I'm taking strides and I've gotten better every week. So hopefully to stay on that track. I think we see a lot of linemen turn to tight end or tight end go to linemen, but quarterback to tight end seems like a pretty unique change. Um, when, when the coaching staff approached you about that, what was that conversation about? Um, you know, it was kind of just um, they saw my frame and saw my abilities, and, you know, it kind of is a testament to, to their vision and what they, what they see in me. Um, but they just asked me, you know, if I'd be open to the position change and um, kind of asked me to run a couple routes here and there, block here and there, saw, saw what I could do. And after they, you know, saw my raw ability, they saw, you know, that I would have potential. And, um, so yeah, just kind of asked if I was, if I was willing. And I said, of course, you know, whatever I can do. And I mean, it's, it's worked out so far. So if you had to compare which one you like better, tight end or quarterback, I, I can't say that I've missed quarterback. <laughs> you know, I love tight end, um, a little bit less thinking, which, and, you know, I kind of enjoy just going out there, letting it rip. Um, but, yeah, it's it's been cool. And um, learning a whole new position, it's just been, been a lot of fun. So, blessed to be where I'm at. Overall, as an offense, where do you think this team has its best strengths? I think I think we're strong all over. Um, we've got an experienced O-line who's, you know, with a great running back running behind them. And you've seen what Carson Steele can do and the O-line opening up holes for him. Um, I think – 
when we're at our best, we, we can be a really balanced football team. Um, the Carson Steele, you know, Vaughn Pemberton, Will Jones, all of them. They're, we've got a really good running back group. And then spreading it out wide, the receiver core is really good. You know, you saw Jay Sean, Yo Hines, um, just making plays down the stretch. And when everybody's clicking and we're all making plays, we can be really dangerous. So I, I don't think we have we have one, one real strength or one real weakness. I think that when we're at our best, we can be really balanced. And John leading the ship is everything we need. So I'm just excited to see what we can do when we get everything clicking all at once. You mentioned opening up holes for Carson and the other running backs. You're now a tight end. What's been the transition like for you as a, as a blocking tight end too, and not just a pass catcher? Yeah. Um, it's, you know, probably the biggest thing that I've been working on lately is, is my run blocking. Um, you know, when you have backs like Carson Steele, Will Jones, Vaughn, um, you know, if you can get them, you know, that last block that they need to really get one, spring one loose. Um, a lot of the times that comes down to the tight end position, just being on the outsides and, I feel like earlier in the season, um, you know, I was missing blocks that we needed to make and, um, you know, every week just trying to take strides in, in my technique and, uh, you know, give those backs those opportunities and, and open up a big one. With you and Tanner being new to the tight end spot, uh, you, you've said Coach Elliott's been somebody you've leaned on heavily, but what other places have you gone to to get better as tight ends? Um, I'd say, you know, Coach Johnson in the O-line room, um, you know, obviously that's all they do is block. So <laughs> <laughs> watching them and, uh, you know, seeing their technique and types of things that you can take from an O-line position and take it into the run blocking game as a tight end. Um, and then also just, you know, watching guys on Sundays, just trying to watch how how they go about the different things that they do and um, trying to take little things from their technique and implement it in your own game. So definitely those two places. Who are the, some of the tight ends that you watch on Sundays? Yeah, um, you know, Travis Kelsey, obviously, he's he's – a freak and kind of <laughs> what I want to be like someday, you know, a true complete tight end, able to run, block, and catch. Um, so watch him a lot. Um, and really just, you know, I'm a football fan, so I watch whatever's on. And I just – it's interesting how when you change positions, like – when I was a quarterback, I'd watch football and kind of watch how the quarterback was doing things. But now that I'm a tight end, like they'll be throwing the ball down the field. And I'm still watching tight end blocking. So um, just just kind of changes how, how you watch the game and how you think the game. So definitely different, but just trying to take everything in and learn as much as I can. So it's almost like you're watching it on a tape basis instead of uh, watching it as a fan in a game basis. Yeah, right. It's it's more it's almost more of a film study to me now. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah. Going back to Colin Johnson and the offensive line, I'm just curious, as a tight end in those offensive line meetings, uh, how, how much do they emphasize tight end blocking in those types of meetings? Um, you know, I think um, for us to be the best run blocking team we can be, we have to work as a complete unit. And, you know, you'll see in practice we'll go down and work with, you know, just the tackles for a while or the whole line for a while, um, just trying to, you know, be the best the best blockers that we can and, and give those running backs those opportunities. But... Um, you know, just working as a unit and um, being on the same page, communicating the best we can, um, that's how you're going to make big plays. So, how Have you liked action so far? It's been really cool. Um, it's kind of, like I said, one of those things you don't really understand until you're in that position. Um, but, yeah, the MAC is it's crazy. Every week is a dogfight. Um, lots of one-possession games. But um, really just a special conference, I think, just um, there's guys everywhere, you know, playmakers everywhere, and um, being able to – you know, battle it out against other great teams week in and week out. Uh, there's never a week off. So it's it's definitely been really cool and excited to keep it going. Oh, Brady, we appreciate you jumping on ChirpCast. Thank you. Yep, appreciate it. That's Brady Hunt tied in for Ball State Football. We'll talk to his position coach, Elliot, coming up next on ChirpCast. At Great Hubler Auto Group, every day is a great day to buy a vehicle because every vehicle comes with the Greg Hubler promise. On top of big savings, you'll also get scheduled maintenance included, complimentary roadside assistance, service pickup and drop-off, and a car wash with every service visit. Shop new Ford, Hyundai, Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC models, plus tons of used makes and models across four central Indiana locations. The Greg Hubler promise comes with every vehicle purchase. Visit GregHublerAuto.com to learn more. We're with passing game coordinator and tight ends coach Jared Elliott, and we can't wait to have this conversation. This is a big one. Jared, thanks for joining us. Oh, I appreciate you. So, Jared, we've, we've talked with head coach Mike New. We've talked to Brady Hunt. Uh, 
Those are two people that you work a lot with on a day-to-day basis. We'll get to all that, of course, um, as, as this podcast goes on. But just wanted to start off, what was Saturday like from your perspective? Oh, well, it was a great win. It was a great team win. And, um, you know, specifically the second half, you know, the last 30 minutes of football. And, you know, I think we started to see some complimentary team football. And, um, you know, we, we obviously have a, you know, we're striving here to be able to play four quarters in 60 minutes. And we didn't do that. But at the end of the day, we found a way. To, to win a game and a critical game and, and, and really a huge game when you're talking about the you know what's not only at stake in terms of a conference game but a rivalry game and you know those mean a lot you know that's what college football is all about so uh, that was a really special win you know for us and, and our players and our program and um, really really proud of how our guys continue to play and compete and you know fought to finish and uh, you know really didn't blink and uh, so that that's encouraging you know just the um, you know the character of this football team looking at the offense specifically what will it take to have that full four quarter game that you're looking for you know it, it all it all boils down to uh, consistency and execution and really at the end of the day offensive football is all about us and and um, you know that that's where you know whether it's third down you know in your critical money down situations you know we've really you know placed an emphasis on finishing drives in the red zone and um, and, and those things and uh, you know it's 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 a consistency deal and uh, you know we, we've got to start fast and we got to finish strong and we got to play you know through a, a duration of four quarters of football and and uh, guys that continue to buy into doing their 111th and just doing their job and and um, and so you know we're, we're excited about a, a, an amazing opportunity again this week against a really good football team in Central Michigan to to go out there and, and hopefully display a you know a, a four quarter offense. You talk about guys buying into the 111th on this team. How have you seen QB one John Paddock buy into his 111th this year? I have had an absolute blast. You know being around John. You know not only you know uh, all the tools that he brings you know and his skill set as a quarterback and his arm talent um, but his demeanor you know how he carries himself you know how he leads um, you know he's really everything that you want you know in terms of a quarterback between the years and uh, you know how, how he operates at the line of scrimmage and um, you know really you know I think a lot of quarterbacking is making guys better around you and he does that you know he's got that contagious and infectious type of personality and, and leadership you know qualities that you want and you know that you look for so uh, for me it's been an absolute blast you know to join the program and and to be around a guy like John Paddock I know our guys you know really um, you know thrive around him and and uh, you know when when you got a a guy under center and a trigger man that you got you know complete confidence in not only as a coaching staff but you know as players they love to play for him and um, so it's been a lot of fun. How did you see that infectious personality from him shine down twenty-one nothing against Northern Illinois, and him be able to lead that group back? Yeah, no, he he never blinked. You know, again, you know, it's funny. You know, leading into that game, you know, uh, Kevin Lynch, our offensive coordinator, Coach New, you know, we talked a lot about that. You know, and um, you know, it starts with that guy, and and that was John. You know, throughout the course of that of the, of that game, and in halftime to rally us, and um, you know, he never blinked. You stay the course, you trust the plan, and and you continue to work the plan, and he did that, and. Um, you know, so credit to John and, you know, just excited. To, it's been a lot of fun to see week by week, you know, um, you know, how John and a lot of other guys around him on this offense are, you know, starting to, um, you know, there's a comfort level that that's almost birthed, you know, and, you know, the more guys play together and, and, uh, and I think we're seeing that. And so, you know, it's just, you know, it's about getting back to work every week. You know, we, we need to have a, a heck of a work week this week and continue to build on that momentum and, and, and really get better, man. We, you know, and, um, you know, just guys that have a hunger to, you know, go out there and fix the things that we need to correct. And again, it's all about us. It's worrying about us. And and uh, so, you know, that that's our plan this week is just to continue to go get better at the things that we need to work on to continue to be one and oh each week. What are some of those things that you do want to see improvement in? Well, you know, I, again, I think the biggest thing is just consistency. I think I think there's times where, um, you know, we, it's there. you see flashes of, you know, whether it's a one play here and there or a drive here and there or, you know, and all those things. And, um, you know, I, th- I think it's just, you know, our guys going out there and, and um, you know, very being very confident and going out there and executing from a play in and play out one at a time, you know, mentality and, and process. And, and um, you know, but we're, 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 we'll, we'll get there. You know, we, we got great guys that are bought in. They're all into what we're doing and and um you know it's 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 a it's a, it's a process and, and things don't always happen overnight and um but we'll get there we know that the confidence is high for john for the tight ends for the wide receivers but how much of a confidence builder was it to be able to make that 21 point comeback third largest ever in program history yeah. and put a stamp on a, a trophy game 
put all that together, how big is that to build? The yeah, no, I, again, I, I think it's a huge confidence deal. I think it says a lot about, you know, the young men that we have in our football team, the quality of our locker room, the culture, um, and our character. And, uh, and I think, you know, um, you know, things, um, Things are always easy when things are going well, mm-hmm. and uh, but when you're when you're hitting the mouth a little bit and you're facing a little bit of adversity, that's the game of football. It's how do you respond, how do you react, and um, and so you know, obviously very encouraging, you know, to see our team continue to fight and play through adversity, and um, you know, and, and and our guys did that, and uh, they went and took a game in a second half when they needed to, when they had to, and um, you know, you saw guys step up and go make a play and take the play, um, and um, and you know, that's what it's going to take, and and. And, you know, when I talk about consistency and all those things, that that's what it takes for four quarters. And and I think our guys are starting to realize that and understand that. You know, you can't sit back and wait in this game. It's an aggressive game. It's a it's a game that's played with urgency. And and um, you know, we we've got the right young men that are that are bought into that. And now it's just continuing to put it into action. You talk about some guys that have taken some hits and run with it. Brady Hunt, Tanner Koziel, two tight ends that have just exploded onto the scene. What have you seen from those two specifically that have helped them grow throughout the year? Well, it all starts with just you know their their desire to to want to be great and and to help this football team and it starts there. You know these guys have, um, you know they they love the game, they love to practice. It means something to them. Um, I think they both take a lot of pride in, in what they do and and um, and not just doing it to do it. You know they want to be again great at what they do and so um, you know that makes it really fun. You know as a coach when you got guys like that and really we got a whole room like that. Ryan Lazan and Casey Cole and you know we we got a group of guys that are kind of bought into, you know, whatever's asked of us, um, you know, whatever our role might be, because um, sometimes they can be dirty and they're not always flashy is just buying into that role and, and, um, and, and going and getting the job done for, for the other 10 guys on the field and our football team and our offense. So, um, you know, it starts there, you know, we, we, you know, they, they got the right, um, you know, DNA in, in terms of what's in their heart and what's in their head. And, and, and then, you know, obviously they, they've got, you know, a really, unique and special skill set you know especially you know those those young two guys you know and and uh, and so you know it, it gives you the freedom to be able to get a little more creative and, and do different things both in the run game and the pass game and incorporate them in ways that you know they can bring a lot of value to our football team and Brady and, and Tanner of course doing some positional changes from high school Tanner was the wide receiver Brady quarterback just from Brady's standpoint how tough is it for somebody in high school to play quarterback and then go into college and, and be a tight end well you know he's you know both of these guys are really smart you know they're really smart players and for Brady you know he's been a quarterback so he's had a big picture thought process so mentally I think it's it's been easy where, where it's different is sticking your face on someone in the run <laughs> game and you know he hasn't done a whole lot of that but um, you know that that's what makes it fun too as a coach and and you know um, there, there there's you know as a, as a young player regardless but you know specifically guys that have transitioned to a new position there's a lot of new you know there's a lot of new and um I've been I've been really pleased and and pleasantly uh, pleased how how these guys have, have really grabbed the bull by the horns and, and you know there's you know they haven't been wide eyed you know and um, you know they're, they're they're they've they've really embraced what whatever's asked them even if it maybe was a little foreign or a little new to them and um, you know you're starting to see you know them getting comfortable and you know you brought up confidence you know you're seeing confidence you know the, the more you do something and um, you know th- th- those guys are are, are definitely um, you know uh, you know reaching a new level of confidence which is important so um you know it's 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 been uh it's it's been a really neat thing for for me as a coach i think for our group and our offense just to see you know those young guys just kind of evolve and emerge and um and 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 the things that we're going to do for them and what we're going to ask them to do and um those guys again they're 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 selfless guys they're team guys they just want to win you know they you know you could you could take every catch away or touchdown away and you know we go win the bronze talk and they'd be the happiest you know the happiest group in the world and that's what special and um you know so we we've got a lot of work to do we got to continue to get better and those guys know that and and um you know that that's that's the goal again this week how do you teach new tight ends how to block properly well <laughs> it, it, it takes time you know first of all you know, I, I think the biggest thing is just having a one uh, having having the desire to do it you know I mean, you, you got to want to do it and um you know that's that's the majority of it and uh both of those guys and and on really our whole group I, I think we got a group of guys that have the willing this to, to to go block people and and that's where the game of football starts right it's, it's about blocking and tackling and at the end of the day and so um it sounds you know, so simple 
Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> it, it can be, I guess, at times. Us coaches probably make them harder than <laughs> right. it needs to be, right? But, um, you know, so it, but it starts with a desire and a want to, you know, and, and, and those guys do. You know, they, they want to do that. Uh, they understand it at the position they're playing, at the tight end positions, the probably one of the most unique positions in all of sports, right? It's a true hybrid. You know, you're, you're you know, a, a receiver and you're an extra lineman or, you know, you're asked to do all those different jobs. So, um, you know, those guys have a desire to do it. There's the technique side of it, you know, that just comes with through practice and, and, uh, and experience. And, and then obviously the weight room has, is a major component. And, you know, just as a guy develops throughout a program and he gains strength. And so, you know, all those things, you know, um, obviously have, um, you know, an impact in, in terms of blocking people and what you do in the run game. You mentioned Ryan Lazan a little bit earlier, mm-hmm. and I want to hit on him because he seems like a pretty versatile guy as well. We've talked a lot about Tanner and Brady, but Ryan goes into a fullback spot sometimes. He'll, he'll go tight end. How valuable is it to have someone like him that can go to the fullback spot and, and lead some charges for Carson, for Will, for Vaughn, and yeah. the rest of the backs? Ryan brings more value than most people know. I mean, he, he really is, again, a, he was a former quarterback in high school, smart player. You know, you can land him anywhere, and he can handle it. Um, you can ask him to do a lot of jobs, and, and um, he embraces it, you know, not only what we've done with him in the past game, and he's made some critical plays for us on the ball this year, but uh, in the run game, and um, you know, really proud of, of Ryan and just what he brings to us, and and again the ability to move him around and kind of just be the fixer in different things, and um, so uh, that he's a special piece and a special component for us as an offense to have, and um, you know, just brings a great you know steady poised type of leadership to our room. He's a guy that's been around, he's been in the program, um, he understands how things operate. I know. You know you know, the younger guys in our room look to, you know, guys like Ryan and Casey, you know, some of those guys that have been in the program and, and older guys that have, that have you know, um, have a couple more notches under their belt, you know. So um, Ryan is, is a special guy and, um, you know, brings a lot of value, you know, to what we do. We're with Coach Elliott here on Chirpcast of the Coaches Show, looking back at NIU a little bit, looking forward to Central Michigan, talking about the tight ends and the passing game with Coach Elliott. Coach, you mentioned Casey a couple of times. He's, he's the veteran of the tight end group. What has his value been this year? Yeah, Casey, he, he brings, he does, he brings just a, a, a lot of leadership, you know, to the group. Um, you know, he's a guy that's grown up around football his whole life. His dad is an extremely successful high school coach. You know, his brother, Clayton, um, you know, is a, is a great player for us. And, um, you know, Casey brings a lot of, of leadership, just camaraderie and unity to our to our room. Um, Casey is one of those guys that um, doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter what you ask him to do, man. He's going to embrace it, and um, you know, he just wants to win. He wants to he wants to see, you know, the other guys have success and and, and be a part of winning uh, games and winning a championship. And um, Casey's kind of an old school throwback type of player, man. He's got that he's got that neck roll and and um, you know he's kind of the grunt of the group you know and uh so you know you need a guy that that embraces dirty jobs that's Casey Cole and I love that I love that about him how many guys actually wear neck rolls these days? Uh, not many. Not many. That's hard to find. He's he's one of the few in the proud, I think. It's very unique. Yeah. You only see a couple of players in the NFL yeah. wear them now. It That's seemed right. like back in the, what, the 80s, 90s, yeah. everybody was wearing them, and now yeah. it's it's phased out I'm a little bit. I'm here for it, man. I love it. <laughs> I, love I love it, too. It. Uh, Coach Elliott, want to get to your personal story a little bit, too. What's your journey been like to get to this point for people who don't know who you are? Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, Hate to say this, man. I you know I played at the rival Miami, Ohio. All right, we'll I, let it slip. Yeah, but we, we'll have a conversation week twelve. Yeah, I know. We'll I have know. a conversation well, week twelve. You know, we're, we're, we're yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but you know, from from Tennessee originally, and I, I played at Miami, Ohio, and and you know, coaching kind of takes you everywhere, and it's and um, and it's done that, and um, it's been such a rewarding um, profession and career choice for for not only me but my family. Um, I uh, got four children, and and really coaching isn't a, it, it's it's really a family profession. You know, it's kind of what it has to be. And and you know, my amazing wife Jamie is is bought into that, and and love loves what we do, loves the young men that we work with, and get the opportunity to uh, to work with, and and our kids love that as well. But uh, I most recently was the head coach at Western Illinois, and um, you know, for me as a, as a, as a coach that you know you're, you're able to learn and grow and 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 mold through a lot of, especially sitting in. That 
that seat. And and I think that did that for me. Uh, being here at Ball State has just been you know, it's been awesome for me, you know, in so many ways. And uh, I'm having a blast right now just coaching ball, being around these players, being in this program, uh, the culture uh, that Coach New and this staff have, have built here over time um, is one that I am just – I'm extremely fortunate to be here. And um, I've learned a lot since I've been here. And so I'm um, excited about what's ahead for us. Um, we got to live in the moment. You know, I love the motto of this football team is and, and really the, the the core foundation is one at a time. And, and uh, you know, that foundation is in place. And, and, and so, you know, even for us as, as coaches and as staff members, it's it's living where our feet are and in the process of day by day and and, uh, and continuing to, to get these players better and, and find ways to, to want, go 1-0 and each week. And sometimes that, that can be tough when you're in the middle of everything and, and when things seem so big. Um, but you mentioned uh, your wife, Jamie. We, we see her at practices yeah. all the time coming up with, with your mm-hmm. child. And the, a lot of the players have talked about that being a big role model mm-hmm. for them and, and seeing you as, as a father and as a family person as a big reason why they love working with you. How have you seen that aspect of your life impact your football players? Yeah, well, you know, I, I think it's important. I, I think it's important for, you know, a, lo- a lot of these players on our team, you know, and, you know, that's what's so special about college football and just football in general. You know, the locker room's a, a true melting you know, pot. We know that, you know, guys from everywhere and different backgrounds and, you know, regardless of, you know, what their you know family situation is or where they're from, everyone is, you know, uh, here on their own they, they don't have their parents here or their you know their siblings or grandparents whatever it might be and um you know i think we we uh, as coaches in this profession we've got an amazing opportunity to just be real and be us and be genuine and let our players you know be involved in our families and around us and and um and 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 be a part of that family interaction that maybe they're missing you know that they don't you know they're they're away from home and and uh, you know you got young guys that have maybe left home for the very first time and they're they're going through you know that you know that transition and so you know I, I i think it's it's an important deal and and um you know shoot my my kids love it probably more than them you know, they, you know so you know my little man will run you know he loves to run around and, and throw the ball around and and um I, I can't say his name's austin i can't say hey great catch austin he wants me to call him brady so you know so you know it, it goes goes both ways and and uh you know it's amazing the impact that our players have um you know, on just, you know, um, youth everywhere, just, you know, in the community or whatever it might be. And, and um, again, that that's one thing I've just been so impressed with here is the quality of young man that we have and the guys that take that seriously being a role model to, to, to young people. How's Austin slash Brady's arm? <laughs> <laughs> I know he's little, but how's his arm? <laughs> you know, he's, he's not bad, man. He, we're working on him. We're working on him. But, yeah, he can spin it a little bit. We'll get him there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, before we let you go, Coach Elliott, how did this opportunity to come to Ball State arise? You, you mentioned the, the head coaching job you had before, played at Miami, Ohio. How did mm-hmm. this particular opportunity arise? Well, um, you know, so I, I, let, I got let go at Western Illinois, and, you know, we, we played against Ball State a year ago, and, and you know, I've, I have followed Ball State closely. You know, um, there, there's some guys that are on staff here already that I've had, you know, previous relationships with, and so, um, you know, I, I never knew, Coach knew, um, you know, real well personally before I got here, but knew a lot of them and followed the success and really how – you know, I've respected so much how we built it the right way. And um, it takes time to build a program. And he did that. And then to see the success that, you know, um, you know, in 2020 and back to back bowl games and, and, and all those things, I wanted to be a part of that. And uh, there was a job that came open and I made sure to express my interest and, and, uh, and again, feel very fortunate, very blessed to be here, not only work with coach new and be a part of this program that, um, you know, the tradition here, uh, the culture here, um, but also, you know, the staff that, uh, you know, is, is, was already here. And, um, and then the quality of players I we, we find it, you know, our, uh, my wife and I and our family, we're very fortunate, very blessed to be here and, and fired up to be Cardinals. Well, Coach Elliott, you've already been part of the third largest comeback in program history last week against Northern Illinois, and we're sure, sure happy you're a Cardinal. Yeah, thank you. That's Coach thank Elliott, you. tight end coordinator and passing game coordinator for Ball State. That does it for this edition of Chirpcast and the Coaches Show. Check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts, we're there. Thanks for joining us. It's Ball State. It's Central Michigan on the road in Mount Pleasant. This has been the Chirpcast. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation.